Hello everyone and welcome to part one of our All Age Online Easter Worship. Today we're going to journey with Jesus and his friends through some of the events of Holy Week. That's the week leading up to Good Friday, the day that we remember Jesus dying on the cross for his love for the world and for you and for me. So as we begin, let's pray. Lord our God, as we hear again the events of the first Holy Week, help us to be aware of your love for us and for all people and give us a fresh understanding of all that you have done for us through your life, death and resurrection. Amen. And so we begin our journey on Palm Sunday and David is going to take us through that part of Holy Week. So Holy Week begins with Palm Sunday, with Jesus riding into Jerusalem. Jerusalem? Jerusalem. So Holy Week begins on Palm Sunday, where Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. And I'm going to try and tell you the story using toilet rolls. Jesus told two of his disciples to go into a village ahead of him and get a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. But what if someone stops us? said the disciples. Tell them the Lord needs it, Jesus replied. And so off they went. My palm leaf fell down. Sure enough, when the disciples got to the village, they found a man and a young rabbit. That's not right. A young donkey. <laughs> a young donkey. One of the disciples started to untie the donkey. Hey, what do you think you're doing? said the man. The Lord needs it replied the disciples and sure enough the man let the disciples take the donkey to Jesus. This next bit is why it's called the triumphal entry not because of them getting the donkey. <laughs> Jesus then rode the donkey into Jerusalem. My palm leaf fell again. <laughs> Stay. Right where were we? Jesus then rode the donkey into Jerusalem and everyone waved palm leaves and put down coats and they all cheered and they shouted Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now some of the Pharisees were not happy about this. Jesus, tell your disciples to be quiet. But Jesus replied, I tell you, if they kept quiet, the very stones would cry out. And that's how Holy Week begins, with Jesus riding as the king into Jerusalem and the people cheering him. But he doesn't come as a king in a, a fancy car or a grand horse, but on a donkey. He doesn't come with the power of empire, but with the power of self-sacrificial love. And as we go into the week, we will see that this is not the kind of king they want. And instead they turn against him. But his power the power of self-sacrificial love will win its greatest victory. Let's see what happens on the Thursday. So as we continue with our journey of Holy Week, we now come to Monday Thursday to explore part of the Easter story known as the Last Supper. After the joy of Palm Sunday and the drama of Jesus riding to Jerusalem, we now come to a time when Jesus and his disciples spent the last evening and a meal together to celebrate the Passover meal. The Passover feast, this was a special meal that people ate together every year to remind them that God had freed the Jewish people from being slaves in Egypt. It's a meal that's been celebrated for thousands of years and is still celebrated today. So our story starts earlier in the day. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead to prepare a meal. 
he told them exactly where to go, what house to enter and what to say. They did as Jesus had asked and found the house and made arrangements with the man just as Jesus had said. When Jesus and the rest of the disciples arrived, they all sat together to eat the Passover feast. Jesus knew this would be the last meal he would eat with his disciples before he died. Now, early during the meal, Jesus did a strange thing. He took off his outer clothing and he wrapped a towel around his waist and then he poured water into a bowl and Jesus began to wash the disciples feet. Although the disciples called Jesus Lord and Master he was also their servant and they were to be servants also to those that they would speak to after Jesus had gone. They should set a good example by helping others and not putting themselves above others and that's something that we can all do today we can all see each other as equals just as Christians believe God sees us so as they were all sitting together Jesus told the disciples that he would be killed and that one of them sitting at the table would betray him and would give him away to the authorities Jesus dipped a piece of bread and he passed it to the man who would betray him. His name was Judas Iscariot. Now as they were all eating again Jesus did something extraordinary. He picked up a piece of bread and he broke and he gave thanks and he passed it around to the disciples. And then in the same way Jesus took the cup filled with wine and again Jesus passed it around. Jesus was referring to the bread and the wine as the blood that he would shed when he died on the cross. Jesus was promising that those who believed in him would have good gifts from God after they had gone. And this is still how Christians remember today what Jesus did when he died on the cross. Jesus said, then said that he would be with them only for a short while longer. He said to his disciples, I give you a new commandment. Love each other. You must love each other as I have loved you. All people will know that you are my followers if you love each other. Now to love each other that means caring for everyone that we meet and for the world, trying to get along with everybody, being helpful, saying kind words, sharing and putting others first. Wouldn't our schools and our world and our lives be a much better place if everybody decided to care for and help each other just as Jesus asked? Do you know there's a lot in this story, all important to Jesus' final living hours. After the meal, Jesus went to a place called Gethsemane. Jesus went to pray. But in the Garden of Gethsemane, Judas came. He kissed him on the cheek. The kiss was to let the temple guards and authorities know who Jesus was. Judas had betrayed Jesus. Jesus was arrested and taken away. And on that thoughtful note, David is now going to lead us with a song. Okay, we're going to sing Noah built the most enormous boat. And that's because in the last verse, it sings about how Jesus died to take away our sin. And if there's one thing that we remember during Holy Week, it's that truth, that Jesus died to take away our sin and that it's in that death that he shows his faithfulness to us. So if you're able to join him with the actions, please do so. Oh, 
something that his people could have seen. Taking them away from slavery. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong. about Jesus' death. Let's hear that story. That song reminds us that Jesus died to take away our sin. And that takes us to Good Friday. And our focus is on the cross. Something that we see in many places, including our churches. And you can see our cross here at St. Andrew's. And lots of people have crosses in their homes. I've got lots of crosses. I think this might be one of my favourites, a rainbow cross, which reminds us that God loves all people, whoever they are, wherever they come from. We've got a holding cross, which people can hold when they pray. And we've got various other crosses that just help us to remember the love that Jesus has for us. And I wonder if we asked a hundred people what the cross means to them, we might have a real selection of answers. Some might see the cross as an item of clothing, something that somebody special might have given to them on a special occasion, maybe their baptism or their confirmation. And it might be something that they never actually take off, but actually they find it hidden maybe under their jumper or under their shirt. Or we might see crosses as big landmarks mounted on high places or on roadsides as a kind of a shrine, as a memorial to someone who might have died tragically. And we often see crosses in our churchyards and our cemeteries as a memorial for people that we want to remember. With these answers telling us that most people will be really familiar in some way with the symbolism of the cross, from the hidden piece of jewellery to the very visible monument. 
For Christians, the cross is central to their faith, which has its roots in the events of Good Friday. Because it was on the cross that Jesus, the man of love and peace, died a violent, unfair and unjust death. Jesus was an innocent man. He was tried and convicted as a criminal at a time when the whole world, including his closest friends, seemed to abandon him, with the soldiers making fun of him and placing a crown of thorns on his head. But why? The Bible explains that God allowed the events to happen to demonstrate the love that he had for all his creation including all of humankind, even those who did those wrong things to Jesus. His love is so great that he even allowed his son Jesus to die to defeat all that is bad in the world so that his kingdom of love and peace might come into the world. And the truth is that we all add to the bad things in the world in the things that we think and say, the things that we do that hurt others and damage God's wonderful creation. Jesus died to take those things away so that we can say sorry and receive his forgiveness and commit to live our lives differently, following his example of love. Let me put it another way. We use a cross every day to say different things, in everyday life. So on Mothering Sunday, I got some cards from my children and they had a cross on them. That cross meant, I love you. Now when I was at school, I might have found a cross in my exercise book, especially if it was a spelling book because I'm not right good at spelling. But it didn't mean that my teacher loved me. It meant I'd got something wrong. And sometimes when you're doing an exam or a test, you're given several answers and you might have to choose the right one and you might have to put a cross against the one that you want to choose. So the cross says something about love. It says something about getting things wrong and it says something about making a choice. You see, We often love to make the wrong choices. We choose to think of ourselves and forget to care for others. We choose to do what's wrong instead of doing what's right. And we add to the brokenness, to the hurt and the pain of the world. Jesus lived his life showing how to make the right choices, how to care for others and how to look after God's world. And when he died on the cross, he made a way to put things right He made a way to put what was wrong right in the world, including those times when we choose the wrong things so that we might know his forgiveness and peace and that we can choose to live his way of love. So although it seems odd calling the day that Jesus died Good Friday, it's really God's Friday, the day when Jesus the one who is always good and always loving, defeated all that is bad, all that is wrong, all that is evil. And that's good news indeed. That's brilliant. As we come to our end of our time together, I just want to thank you for joining us today. And hopefully you've just learned a little bit more about Jesus' final week, a week which we call Holy Week. And we look forward to seeing you next time when together We'll continue this story and experience and explore the joy of Easter Day together. So let me just finish with God's blessing. So may God's blessing be with us as we go. A blessing from the one who calls us together. A blessing from the one who never deserts us. A blessing for life in all time and in all places. A blessing from our gracious God. And may God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with you today and those you love and care for. Amen. So from David, Kathy and myself, see you again soon. Goodbye.